where our reporter Aldrin Sampe is on standby. Very good morning to you, Aldrin. Of course, so we just saw four of our MPs being sworn in. Take us through the highlights of this morning. <laughs> Well, just a moment ago, you saw um, the members of South Africa's parliament take another oath of office, this time an oath of office um, being sworn in as members of the Pan-African Parliament. Um, four of those members are standing right next to me right now. Let me ask Metandi Mudisa to first start, NCOP chairperson, but now also a member of the Pan-African Parliament. Why is it so important to be part of this, uh, part of this uh, parliament? It's always important to be part of a collective. The African collective needs to work together legislatively. Parliamentary diplomacy is important. Issues of economic and peace are important for us. So that is why as the South African Parliament, we are proud to be part of this parliament. For me personally, the people of South, uh, South Africa and the people of Africa always come first. Quickly, just two issues. The first one is, if you look at this, the makeup of this parliament, for instance, um, each and every member state is only allowed to bring five members, and um, the condition is that there must be at least one female. That, the bar is set very low on that, isn't it? It is, but we're hoping it will improve. There is certainly a, a position taken by the AU on gender representatives, but it is also incumbent on country members to make sure that their gender allocations get the balance that we need. Last one is uh, the Malabu Protocol. Is South Africa ever going to ratify that? Meditiza will answer that one. <laughs> if that's the case, she's standing right next to me on my right hand side. Will South Africa ever ratify the Malabu Protocol? Well, as you know, that each country has to assess the impact of any protocol, be it the AU protocols or the United Nations and to see to what extent will its impact you know assist the development of the country obviously as part of the African Union we are bound by the you know various protocols that our parliament will ratify in relation to the AU at the moment South Africa is looking at the Malabo protocol and I'm sure they will in time do what it's necessary to ensure that that protocol is effective why is it taking so long? Because even if you look at the, at the, um, the international subcommittee of the ANC, it has said that it must be ratified. What's there still to be assessed? Well, we can ask the chairperson of the portfolio committee in the National Assembly and the select committee as to what work does Parliament need to do to actually ratify that protocol. Because here's the thing, and I'm going to bring Julius in um, after this, is that the argument that has been made before, even by Floyd Chivambu, is that um, this institution is somewhat of a lame duck. It doesn't have any legislative powers. And it seems as though that the influence that South Africa has may just change that. And South Africa is not using um, that power to convince the other member states to also ratify. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say uh, PAP is a lame duck. Obviously, it's the framework that governs the PAP that will enable it to have teeth as much as the teeth we want. And one of those is the ratification of the protocol that will change the status of the PAP from being an advisory to a legislative body. And we are conscious of that as South Africa, and that's why we want to ensure that we do what is necessary within our power to make sure that that protocol is actually approved. You can see one of the things that South Africa has done has been to review its own uh, representation in the PAP, hence we are being sewn in today. That, in my view, shows the seriousness of the South African Parliament to ensure that we ourselves, as a host of the PAP, are not just the host, but also are effective participants in the work of the PAP. Um, let me bring in the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema, who's also, um, who's also just been sworn in as a member of the Pan-African Parliament. Is it satisfactory, though, what you hear from um, Mayor Togo Titi's about um, the ratification of this protocol? Well, it is not uh, satisfying because, uh, as South Africa, we should play a leading role in getting member states in Africa to sign that protocol to give this institution teeth to bite. It cannot continue to be an advisory body. It must legislate. It must hold the countries accountable. Most African countries do not adhere to principles of democracy. They do not respect democratic outcome. There are a lot of corruption, institutionalized corruption, and other unacceptable 
you know, conducts that are being done in many other countries. But PAP can't intervene because it doesn't have teeth. Um, and uh, I'm happy that the uh, South African Parliament has taken a decision to send uh, uh, their senior leadership to this institution so that uh, they can begin to change the attitude but also to put pressure on our own parliament to sign the protocol uh, so that we can move around the continent encouraging other countries to sign the same protocol giving this institution teeth to bite. I was actually going to ask you that because if you look at what uh, Floyd Chivambu had said, your deputy had said in this parliament before, is saying that um, this has been reduced to, it should be reduced rather to a, uh, a, a, a parliamentary forum that should be called a forum, not a parliament, because it lacks th those teeth that everybody has been, have, everyone has been seeking for. Well, uh, many people have been accusing the delegation here that most of these people who are coming here, they are coming to a holiday because they've got nothing to do in their countries. It is precisely because of the powers of this institution. And therefore, they just see it as a, one of the touring programs to South Africa. But once you give it a sharpened teeth, then people will begin to appreciate that we are not here to tour. We are here to make sure that there is proper legislation governing our continent and holding the leadership of our continent accountable. Would you say important to this is also um, the members who are deployed to this, uh, to this parliament must, be, must include young people as well? Absolutely. And uh, women, uh, we, you know, um, that's why we're saying it's, a, it's an advisory body to say you can send one woman. It's not enough. We should be able to say we need 50% uh, of the representation here to be women. And... Uh, there should be consequences for those states which do not send the necessary uh, required representation of women, including young people. Majority of uh, African parliaments are constituted by old age, and it's unacceptable. And uh, the old age will even be determining plans, calling them 2030 plan, 2063 plan, knowing very well they won't be here. So we need the young ones who will put a plan which they will know that if they do not implement, they will still be held accountable in 2063, in 2030. How do you hold a 70-year-old 70, a accountable in 2063? Nature will not allow for that person to be around at that time. So we need the youth which will also continue with a institutional memory which will be loyal to the decisions which are taken uh, by this uh, institution. So we are here to make it vibrant but also to ensure that indeed it gets the necessary teeth to bite. Okay then, thank you so much. Uh, Mayor Tandi Mundisa, just before I speak to um, Ubab Mank, um, quick one, um, why is it that South Africa is not putting forward a candidate for, for president? Well, we, all of us, as you see us here, we have just arrived. African people believe in traditions and protocols. We, the opening and the lobbying for presidency was long before we were sworn in this morning. Um, in fact, we do believe that this parliament is supposed to actually have the presidency on a rotational basis like they do at the AU. This, we think, is long overdue for the Southern African region. And that is why South Africa will back a candidate from SADC to take over the presidency of the Pan-African Parliament. The fact that we do not take presidency does not mean South Africa will never take it. But you must always remember that um, we believe that you do not come in with a hammer. You talk to people. We don't define democracy the same way as African states, all of us sitting here. We have different constitutions. Even the issues of holding the executive to account. Remember, when they constituted the PAP, they did not look for, it was constituted by the AU, which is run by the executive. They did not look at a parliament which will hold them to account. The second uh, thing which is a bit of a problem is that each country wants to cling to its sovereignty. So when you start moving onto the leg of the legislative um, uh, um, arena, you've got to, as Africa, begin to say which of the lines are you loosening, which part of your sovereignty are you letting go. But if you look at why the PAP was set up and even in the 
in the oath we were reading, it is around the issues of the economics. And therefore, as a parliament, we should, that I accept, we should, uh, for a long time ago, have said, but hey, wait a bit, it's not just about us okaying and ratifying treaties here. It should be deep, deep, deep more about stabilizing Africa, ensuring that economic development happens, but defining certain things together so that we move forward as a continent. I wonder, um, Mandla, just bringing you in and uh, listening, to, listening to what Metandi Mudise had to say, I wonder then, was um, South Africa too quick to be part of those discussions around um, the Malibu Protocol and whether the African Union, by its own means, um, is not ready for such a thing? Perhaps just to start off on the question that uh, was raised, why South Africa is not fielding a candidate. I think what is crucial for us is to ensure that uh, the region itself, SADC, is united. We need to ensure that we field strong candidates that will be able to bring in the result needed. We have been in the past uh, been a divided region uh, with various uh, challenges. But uh, we hope that uh, in the caucus that will be sitting this afternoon, we will uh, be able to unite the region and come out with clear, strong candidates. Uh, I have been uh, in the uh, observer earlier in the year in February when I attended, and uh, we have uh, two candidates that are being fielded from uh, Zimbabwe and Botswana. And we are hopeful that uh, whatever resolution we undertake, in the caucus today will be able to come out with a strong candidate for the southern region. But I think uh, also what is important for South Africa is to ensure that uh, we uh, uh, are able to unite the entire continent and uh, integrate uh, uh, Africa so that we are able to, as Africa, speak as one voice. It is important that we are able to find uh, uh, African solutions uh, through the challenges that Africans are facing. So that is uh, first and foremost uh, a priority to us as the delegation that is posted here at Pan-African Parliament. The levers also on um, the, the court being established, the justice court being established and having more power in terms of um, criminal, taking on criminal cases as well. Well, uh, that, that is uh, what uh, needs to be looked at uh, uh, in the months uh, ahead to ensure that uh, we look at uh, the real legislative means of uh, Pan-African Parliament. Uh, it is slowly being rendered and seen to be a parliament with no teeth or an institution with no teeth. But I think we have an immense role as South Africa that we can contribute in changing that perception. Well, thank you so much indeed um, to the four parliamentarians who have joined me here. As you've heard uh, from themselves, it will be a debate that we, um, that we follow quite closely with regards to what will happen with regards to this, um, this protocol. And as I've indicated, that of course um, the, Human Rights, uh, the Human Rights Court as well as the Justice Court, which, ha which has been established, still seeks that protocol being ratified by at least 28 member states before they can try um, crimes such as crimes against humanity and so forth. But that's something that will certainly watch closely and over the next uh, few few days, the uh, next two weeks rather, there'll be debates around various issues, including corruption that has plagued the continent. It's back to you in, in the studio. Definitely. Thank you very much for that, Aldrin Sepe. Coming to us live from Midran at the Pan-African Parliamentary swearing-in of MPs.